Last week, the German government collapsed because its economy is on the verge of another devastating downturn. And then this week, from the perspective of that collapsing economy, its view on the rest of the global system was nothing short of alarming. The widely followed and highly influential zoo survey showed a near record low assessment. This perspective also applies to global interest rates, and in particular, the current sell-off in U.S. Treasury yields. From Germany's macro and financial perspective, Treasury yields have gone too far in the current direction after having corrected, so to speak, from going too far the other way up until mid-September. Treasury rates reconverge with where Germany is at, which makes the zoo, if you will, all the more relevant and useful here in this context, too. Germans' evaluation of their own situation was so bad that not a single respondent in the entire survey said it was good. Not a one, zero. But here's the thing. They see it that way in large part because of globally synchronized. They're saying it's really bad in Germany because what they see from everywhere else only makes everything at home that much worse. And that German perspective of the world is corroborated widely by key markets and signals including, as I mentioned last week, the first ever negative swap spread. The zoo and the spread are almost perfect mirror images. Widespread and repeated validation are what make these estimates so compelling, why they're highly influential. They tell us what the rest of the world looks like from Germany's principal perspective. So what is this zoo or ZEW? And I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the group's official name. It's the ZEW. In describing the ZEW survey, they say, based on ZEW financial market test, up to 300 experts from banks, insurance companies, and financial departments of selected corporations have been interviewed about their assessments and forecasts for important international financial market data every month since 1991. Participants are asked about their six months expectations concerning the economy, inflation rates, interest rates, stock markets, as well, exchange, as well as exchange rates. So they're drawing information from all over the world and putting it into a German context and perspective. So we've got highly professional commercial agents and financial agents from Germany telling us what they think about how the rest of the world might impact circumstances in Germany today as well as in the future. We have a sentiment index that looks outward. We've got a situation index, which is our current focus. And for the current month of November 2024, the ZEW first of all reported a drop in the sentiment index, the forward-looking outlook part of the survey. And here's what Bloomberg wrote on why that was. Investor confidence in Germany's economy unexpectedly worsened in November after a spate of bad news from the country's industry, the collapse of the three-party government, and they throw in there, the election of Donald Trump. And there's some truth to each one of those, though it's mostly the first part, not just domestic industry, but the conditions across the rest of the global economy. Though some German, German uh, companies and officials are worried about the potential for trade restrictions and frictions that develop under an incoming Trump administration. That is certainly part of the growing pessimism. But far more important than that is the fact that there is growing pessimism at all because the ZEW survey is down substantially from where it was earlier in the summer. The latest figure was plus 7.4, which is down from plus 13.1 in October, but it had been as high as almost plus 50 back in June. And that was on the premise of disinflation plus, as we always see in the ZEW sentiment part of the survey, forward-looking part of the survey, they always love central banks doing something. So sentiment had roared ahead in the early part of this year to the middle part of the year based on expectations for continued disinflation plus rate cuts from the ECB. This is something we come back to time and time again with the zoo survey. Sentiment always picks up when central banks are doing things except in these more extreme circumstances like we're seeing now. Since the summer, as the ECB has not only cut rates, started to cut rates, it is accelerating its rate cut schedule, yet sentiment has only sank further and further and further. And it did so long before Donald Trump's election was a high probability or let alone assured. It's about the stumble in the global economy picked up from the German perspective on sentiment. 
And as I said, you can go back through the history of the ZEW sentiment portion, the forward-looking part, and you see the same thing. It always accelerates higher when central banks are forced into doing something. The most extreme example was in 2008. The sentiment survey, the sentiment index got as low as minus 63.9, the lowest point in July of 2008, and it was still minus 63 in October, but by February 2009, it was almost back to zero. You could say that was just Germany's commercial agents being early, but that's really early. February 2009, the world was still melting down. So why they were more optimistic about the future was because of all of the government efforts to try to combat the global financial crisis, which wasn't financial, nor was it having much success. The governments were not having much success. Yet commercial agents were relatively more sanguine about the future as that wore on. And then again in 2011, the ZEW's sentiment index got down to minus 55.2 in November of 2011 as euro dollar number two. The European banking crisis, which is really about repo and collateral shortages, started to really press the global system. But then the ECB comes in with its LTRO schemes and suddenly the sentiment index soars to plus 22.3 in March and plus 23.4 in April. But that was again premature because Recession continued to develop across Germany and Europe and a downturn across the rest of the world, especially in China and emerging markets, from which they would not recover. And by August of 2012, the sentiment index was right back down to 25.5. So we find ourselves, as far as the sentiment survey is concerned, in a similar position. Earlier this year, sentiment went far ahead, rose substantially based on the idea that central banks were going to become more active and more accommodative, which German commercial professionals are always in favor of. However, suddenly, despite the fact that the ECB is still cutting rates and accelerating its rate cuts, there's your clue right there, sentiment in the ZEW survey has fallen back down anyway, because the ECB is responding to weakness that the Germans also see in their own sense. So it's not really politics, it's economics. And it's not really the sentiment forward-looking number, which is susceptible to influence from central banks. It was the situational assessment from the ZEW that really grabs our attention. That one fell to minus 91.4 here in November, which is down around five points roughly from October, but it had been minus 68.9 in June, which means Minus 68.9 is not a good figure by any stretch of the imagination, but at least it was moving in the right direction. But down 22 and a half additional points over the four months since June. So you're talking about a bad stumble during the summertime, summertime being the time for recession. And that minus 91.4 for here in November is near a record low. We're almost in the same exact, I mean, only a couple points off of March and April of 2020, or the worst months of 2009. So Germans' assessment of their current situation is nothing like the sentiment part of it, forward-looking part of it. They're saying things got materially worse during the summertime. And again, that's not just a reflection of specifically Germany. It's a view on the rest of the world and what's going on outside of there from the German perspective. And astonishingly, Zero, literally zero of the respondents said the situation in Germany was good. And again, that's why the German government collapsed, because the summertime economy was slammed, and the German, German government has no answers for it. In fact, they, 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 don't even, they won't even recognize the fact that the economy has been in recession for two years. They might say it's stagnating, it's malaise, but we're talking about a massive contraction in just GDP. When you put, it, when you put current GDP against where it should be based on just a prior trend. It's an enormous gap, and German voters can sense it, and even politicians understand it's getting worse there. Because it's getting worse there, as I reported last week, swap spreads in Germany, the 10-year maturity, turned negative for the first time ever. And of course, the media tried to sell it as suddenly fears over the German fiscal deficit situation, that they're suddenly they're going to borrow too much and raise too much debt. As usual, the media was either ignorant about what swap spreads really mean or sometimes lying in order to foster an agenda. But what you see is that the German ZEW situation index is a very close correlation 
between that and swap spreads. So the German 10-year swap spread fits almost exactly with the ZEW situation index. In fact, in some of your Euro, Euro dollar cycles, the ZEW responded sooner than the swap market did. And as swap, market, as swap spreads became more negative in the German 10-year in 2022, as the recession in Germany and Europe really started to develop, the downturn in the global economy on the downside of the supply shock, what do you see? You see the ZEW situation index collapse, but also swap spreads doing exactly the same thing. So while the media tried to tell you that this was about fears over German debt, once again, we see that swaps as well as this macroeconomic indicator closely correlating because they're basically the same thing from different angles. And that same thing pertains to not just the German economy, it's perceptions of outside and the potential impact on Germany. That's why swap spreads in Germany correlate strongly with swap spreads around the rest of the world because it's all globally synchronized. Of course, if we're talking about the fundamentals of the German and global economy in globally synchronized fashion, that also means we're talking about, we have to, interest rates, market interest rates, growth and inflation expectations, deep fundamentals. And as I pointed out many times before, including in a video from April 16th, which was an important point, moment in time for the bond market's trajectory and trends over the last year, as I said back in April 16th, and I pointed out, German yields and their U.S. Treasury counterparts often trade in very similar corresponding fashion. Now, they were deviating. The Treasury yield had gotten, it sold off in the Treasury market and it gotten above its German counterparts in the middle of April. And what I said in that video was, well, this. The future path of short-term interest rates has become highly uncertain given especially recently the U.S. CPI and some other uh, economic accounts as well. We don't know how the Federal Reserve is going to interpret them. And while the German market is telling us the global situation hasn't changed and the Treasury market up until recently said you completely agree, what has changed is exactly that. The Federal Reserve part of it is now the one, one variable that's actually up in the air. And that's the part the Treasury market is having difficulty trying to settle. And once that uncertainty about the Federal Reserve and the future path of short-term interest rates began to clear up because the economic fundamentals reasserted themselves and not in sticky inflation, then the U.S. Treasury rates, whether it's a 10-year maturity or the two-year maturity, they converge back again with their German counterparts, which is the normal pattern here. There is more variation in the Treasury market relative to Germany. So what German rates were saying is that in April, just like in October of last year, just as the bond rally globally was getting started, what German rates were saying is that the Treasury sell-off was getting to be too much. And that's what I said in that April video. And sure enough, within a couple weeks, Treasuries began to rally all over again, starting the second leg of the global rally that culminated in the, in the decline in rates to the middle of September. So eventually U.S. Treasuries would come back to where Germany was and then they both would continue on in the next leg of the rally. But focusing here on the two-year, because that's where the biggest divergence has shown up. Really, historically, the two-year Treasury and the two-year shots in Germany have been even tighter than the correlation between the 10-year maturities. And what we saw was that the two-year in the U.S. Treasuries way overshot on the downside from July into August into September, going well below where German rates had been. Now coming back out of it, the U.S. Treasury two-year has gone way far above the German two-year on the upside. So overshooting to the downside, now overshooting to the upside. And a lot of that has to do with, again, the same thing that we we're talking about in April, which was uncertainty over the future path of short-term interest rates, trying to interpret the Federal Reserve. Because ever since the middle of September, the Fed has been trying to walk back its dovishness, to walk back its intention to cut rates. And so it sows a little bit additional uncertainty over and above the fundamentals, the global fundamentals, as they're seen from the German perspective. So what we expect is that, once again, the U.S. Treasury two-year, the U.S. Treasury 10-year, the entire U.S. Treasury curve will eventually revert back to where Germany is, as it did in April, as it did last October. And that will, of course, include the Federal Reserve once the Federal Reserve gets in the same 
becomes more aware of and recognizes the, those fundamentals as priced in the German curve and the U.S. Treasury curve, considering the variation. So the Fed will eventually cut rates in the same way that we see those developing in Europe. And we can see that in a number of ways, too, not just in these comparisons between the Germany's bond market and the U.S. Treasury market, but also things like Euriber futures and their behavior versus term SOFR futures. Unlike term SOFR futures that have reflected the higher degree of uncertainty over the Federal Reserve and its response to the variations in perceptions of weakness in the U.S. and global economy, Euriber futures haven't really budged after the summer rally. They dropped substantially in terms of projections of forward interest rates, which means higher Euriber future price contract prices, but they haven't really budged after the summer rally. Because weakness in Europe, Germany especially, is far more apparent than it is currently in the United States. And that means the trajectory of short-term interest rates, as determined by the ECB, is also much clearer in Europe than, compa than when compared to the U.S. as well. One reason, again, one key reason why you don't have the same level of variation in especially the German two-year relative to the U.S. Treasury two-year. So Euriber futures are telling us the same thing here. First of all, the German economy is in deep trouble. Number two, the German economy is not alone in that deep trouble. It's also a reflection of global fundamentals, starting with Europe, and that the European Central Bank is further along in recognizing those troubling fundamentals. And therefore, the path of short-term interest rates in euro terms is much clearer relative to treasuries. But once the path also clears up in the U.S., not for a good, good reasons, then the level of uncertainty in the Treasury and U.S. dollar markets also diminishes, which means that, once again, Treasury yields go back down and reconverge to where Germany already is. So we have Germany's ZEW, or ZEW, with a relatively sharp drop in sentiment, especially going back to the middle of the year, despite the fact the ECB is cutting rates and doing so more aggressively, which is normally something the ZEW sentiment part of the survey is always looking for and looking forward to. So that already tells us that sentiment is souring. This had nothing to do with recent elections. It soured during the summertime. It had to do with conditions in the global economy during the summertime. Because it's not just about Germany, it's about the German perspective of what's happening around the rest of the world. And their assessment of the situation in Germany related in part to conditions in the rest of the world also deteriorated substantially during the summertime. And so while we have a bond market divergence currently between German rates and U.S. Treasury yields, that bond market divergence always closes in Germany's direction. The German market does a better job of sticking to the fundamentals because it doesn't have the Federal Reserve and FOMC officials to raise uh, uncertainty over short-term interest rates. So Germany might have a better window on globally synchronized growth and inflation potential, and that's just what we get from the ZEW perspective. So not only will market interest rates swing in the direction of those fundamentals expressed by the German marketplace, we also expect the global economy to do the same thing because globally synchronized means we're all stuck in the zoo. One other corroborating signal, that's the decline in demand and use of diesel fuel globally. I went over those details, those very critical details in the video link below. As always, thank you very much for joining me. Huge thank you, Eurodollar University members and Eurodollar University subscribers. And until next time, please take care.